Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, then welcome in, get comfortable, because today we're going to go over something that's got the internet on fire. Everyone's been talking about it. Forbes has written about it. It's all over social media. It's your favorite hardcore extraction shooter, EFT, Escape from Tarkov, the one and only. There are a lot of really shady things going on with this game right now, but there's also a reason why I think that you should probably be happy about it. Let's jump into the video and break this down. All right, guys and gals, I don't do too many journalistic style videos on this channel. There are a plethora of other videos out there that have been made by channels who do specialize in journalistic gaming, journalistic style update videos for games. That's not my bread and butter, not my forte. However, when something does come across the table, comes across the desk, that's a hot, new, juicy item. Kind of like the day before was, I feel like I have to cover it, have to at least give my input on it. So that's what this is gonna be. Mostly me giving my perspective and my input. If you want a detailed journalistic point by point breakdown, Big Fry, Jack, Frags, Landmark, Asman, Gold, their list goes on and on. All of these guys have really detailed breakdowns of what is going on with the current status of this controversy. However, this is going to mostly be you and I speaking about the state of this game. I want to hear your comments. I want to see what you have to say. Drop a line below. This is one of the biggest gaming controversies uh, in a little while, I would say. At least for games that I keep up with and that I actively play. So, Escape from Tarkov has essentially pulled the rug out from under its community by releasing the unheard edition of the game, if I'm saying that right, and charging $250 for it after promising their Edge of Darkness collector's edition uh, partners, purchasers, community members, that they were going to get all of this stuff for free as it released down the road, which now seems to be completely the opposite of what's, what's actually happening. So... Uh, I've said it a million times on this channel, guys, anytime that I do a journalistic style video, anytime that I get on a soapbox about games, the state of gaming, I did the exact same thing with the day before video that I posted on my channel. And I'm going to say it a million more times. Early access gaming ruined the gaming industry. Period. Period. Early access games ruin gaming. Now, what do I mean by that? What am I saying? The practice of early access gaming makes total sense. There's nothing wrong with least releasing a game in alpha, closed alpha, closed beta, to test your game as it goes through production. You test it, you receive the feedback, you fix the bugs, you test it, you test it, you test it, and then you release the game. That was the way that it was when I was growing up, going to the store to buy games that came in a box that had a small novel inside of it. You got home, you cracked the game open, you played it, and that was it. It was a fully finished product from beginning to end. When early access gaming hit the scene, guys, the gaming industry tanked it tanked now escape from tarkov has been around for quite some time probably predating the rise and the flux of early access titles escape from tarkov has officially been in beta for what seven eight nine ten years and i'm just gonna go ahead and say it man now that this has come to light the game is never going to release as a 1.0 version of itself. And in all honesty, what do you expect to get from an Escape from Tarkov 1.0 version? I mean, we've been playing the damn game for 8 years. What are they going to put in? What are they going to put into Escape from Tarkov 1.0 that makes it I mean any different, worth anything? Now this move has taken place, a $250 add-on 
expansion, downloadable, whatever you want to call it, edition of the game. A beta, mind you, a game that is still being classified as a beta. It's not even a full release, even though everyone knows that this is the game. This is all it's ever going to be. You know, hiding a game under the guise of alpha or beta is exactly what I mean by saying that early access gaming killed the gaming industry. Because now all a company has to do is say, oh, well, it's in beta. You know, it's in beta. We're working on it. That's to be expected. It's in beta. But when you drop a $250, and that's US dollars, $250 price tag on an addition, not even a new game, not even a new story, not even a new anything, but simply an addition to the current existing content that was promised to the people who already spent $150 on the Edge of Darkness edition. Uh, I mean, it's easy to see why your community is boycotting the game, why the Discord, why Reddit, why social media, why major news publications like Forbes are taking, uh, are putting light on this. Because you've really shit the bed, man. I mean, you've almost, you've all but completely destroyed your, your reputation, your name, your community's trust in you. I really don't know why they would do something like this. The interview that came out, uh, or that was released on the Reddit forums with Nikita, apparently, if it was legit, was quite frankly, uh, extremely uninformative and, and unhelpful and provided no uh, comfort or clarification on really anything other than that this is what they were doing, what they wanted to do. They weren't backing down from it. This was the path that they were going to push forward with. I really don't get it. I have no idea. It's such a crazy ass this decision that it almost seems like there's some sort of ulterior motive going on that we just don't understand. And what I thought was hilarious is that after all this happened, I got a, a free code, a free access code in my email inbox from, from Battlestate Games, a key for Escape from Tarkov Arenas, a free key. That gives me access for three days, three days to escape from Tarkov Arena. And I could only imagine how many people got that free key to escape uh, uh, from Tarkov Arena. What the hell is that for? What's that about? One of two reasons. They either need more people to play Arena because it completely failed and they're trying to recoup losses, which is what a lot of people think that this $250 price tag is for, or it's a half-assed way of saying, hey, uh, we know you're pissed. Here's a free code to escape from Tarkov Arena. Oh, and it expires in 72 hours. It's a joke, man. Now again, the journalistic style of content creation isn't really something that I cater to here on the channel, but Escape from Tarkov is a game that I've played a lot of. It's a game that anyone who has played the game could easily and readily admit, or at least they should, that it just, it's not really comparable to anything else. It's a game where there really is no alternative. There is no alternative. Until now. And that's ultimately why I said at the beginning of the video, even though it's a huge slap in the face to the die-hard community that is Escape from Tarkov, and there's absolutely no excuse for it. I think you might just try a little to look on the bright side of this and be happy in knowing that this type of attention, this type of controversy, hopefully will only help propel the gaming industry forward in a positive direction, knowing publicly that this is fraudulent, scam, whatever you want to call it, false advertising, misleading the, the, the people, the shareholders, if you will, the consumers who have bought their game. It's, it's quite frankly, in, in my mind, it's, 
it's really borderline illegal practice. Okay, it's malpractice, right? It really only can be taken in my mind as something that will hopefully compel the gaming industry as a whole, the publishers, the devs, to take this shit seriously. Grey Zone Warfare just had a seven day closed early access promotion that was given out to a handful of content creators. The game looks fantastic. It needs a lot of polishing, but it looks great. Apparently, there's a new game called Arena uh, Outliers or something like that. Infinite. I could be getting that name wrong. Arena something infinite. Out, out, outliers, Outlanders. This is the time, guys. I mean, this is it. This is the time. This is the time. So, the reason I say you should be happy is not because I actually think that you should be happy. It's a huge slap in the face. It's an extremely unique game that satisfies a particular itch that really no other game does. However, the amount of attention that this is getting can only, hopefully, only institute the mentality, the practice, the ethics, the morals, the standard within the gaming industry to stop allowing this shit to happen perpetuating this type of shit if legal action has to be taken against the studios the publishers then do it institute something institute something now escape from tarkov is a is he is published and and developed by a studio in russia so as far as legal action is concerned i don't know what there really could be other than perhaps po potentially limiting the sales or banning the sales of the game in u.s marketplaces i don't know how they would do that but by and large the only thing that we can really hope for is that those types of standards become the normal and that by a game of such scale of such loyalty in the shooter space having done something like this that games like Grey Zone Warfare, games like Arena Infinite that's coming to PC will have a chance to shine through and can prove, again, this is up to the devs, that they're capable of executing and delivering something that gives us a path forward into, into an arena, into a, into a phase, into a circle of gaming that is not filled with fraudulent, corrupt practices. It's exactly what I was talking about in the video I made about the day before. How that is not considered pure and blatant fraud, uh, extortion, and how there isn't legal action taken against a studio that does some shit like that, it is beyond me. I'm not a legal expert, I don't know how it works, but it's beyond me. And that's why, again, I'm here to say, early access, beta access gaming killed gaming. And we allowed it to happen because we gave these studios and, de and devs and publishers our money. We gave them our money for an unfinished product. And it happens over and over and over. It's the new formula. It's the new formula. Everything is early access. Everything is beta. It's got to stop. There has to be some sort of standard set in place that no longer allows. There's also got to be a community uprising for people who enjoy playing games, who are invested in interactive entertainment. Stop investing in early access, beta access games. There's a difference between opening up your game for testing and then closing it back down to fix issues, maybe doing that two, three, four times during the entire life cycle of the game uh, production pipeline. There's a, there's a big difference between that and releasing it day one of development for 60 fucking dollars and then promising for years it's going to be finished one day, it's going to be finished one day. Enough is enough, man. I'm hoping that 
the game being the the scale, the magnitude that it is, with the amount of coverage that it's getting, and and the fan base that is Escape from Tarkov, that this ignites and ushers in a new front when it comes to what we as gamers, consumers of interactive media are willing to accept. Stop giving in them your money. Stop allowing these things to happen and to perpetuate and to succeed just for them to run off into the night, shut everything down, turn all the lights off, and you're just shit out of luck with a bag full of trash on your desk that never came to be. Anyway, guys and gals, I'm off my soapbox. There are plenty of highly detailed videos out there uh, on uh, covering uh, exactly what's going on, where it started, uh, things like the website being changed, uh, what's included in this six month trial of Edge of Darkness versus the unheard edition. You know, if you, if you want bullet points, there's a, a bunch of channels out there highlighting that. I simply wanted to discuss it with you all, voice my opinion, hear what you had to say, what you thought about it. Drop a line below. If you're new to the channel, then I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, throw a like on the video. It, it helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm. If you enjoy the content on the channel, then throwing a subscribe is even better. I'm going to leave it there, guys and gals. It's a shame, man. It's a crying damn shame. You know, EFT was a true gem. A true gem in the industry for what it offered, for what it provided. You know, there wasn't anything else really like it. And, and, and at least right now, there still isn't until something fully releases that we can get behind. And, and hopefully, um, the, the cataclysm that is the downfall of EFT will usher in a new era of that type of game. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you all in the next video.